Hey, welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make predictive search. Now, as you can see on my screen, I have San Francisco in this map view, and we're basically going to reuse the assets I'm used to previous video about the mapping and, and how to make interactive maps. But today what I want to do with you and, and what I want to show you is exactly how to make a predictive search, meaning let's say we have this map view, right? When the user would type in, let's say here, London or San Francisco or something like that, we would suggest them the locations, be it, let's say for a typical search or a map search, it doesn't really matter. You would still use the same type of approach to autocomplete and perhaps suggest different versions. So I'm gonna go ahead and just in our input field here, I'm gonna delete our text. I'm gonna go ahead and just take our input field from the list of options in the widgets like so let's say so we don't really need any border can leave it like that as long as it's obvious that the users can click if not we can also suggest it let's actually give it a name so let's say this is search field but if you go in that settings icon next to search field which is quite hidden actually take feedback and change it please you can then add hint text to it or a tooltip so we can say uh, or you can say e.g. location, e.g. London or something like that. You know, you can you can be creative as you wish. You can center it. It's really up to you how you want to do it. So it's most obvious for the user. This might be a bit tricky to understand when it's next to menu item, you know, from UX standpoint. But I mean, it, yeah, just go crazy with it. Try to try to make it as neat and cool as possible and most user friendly, most important bit. But let me just show you exactly how it's gonna behave right now. Always previewing. As you can see, once we type, start typing, it disappears, but we don't have any auto suggestions. So what we're gonna do next is we are just gonna pre-populate the auto suggestions. For this, we can use variables, we can use conditions. I think conditions are the best here because we can, if let's say letter typed A, we can suggest Albuquerque, Alberta, you know, all those different types of locations. So we can follow that example. And then as much as you would want to create for each alphabetical letter, it's not possible to cover all of them. So you almost have to consider what the users would type most likely and then cover just a few cases so you can test that pattern. It's, it's going to give you enough detail to kind of follow through and just implement it in your designs and update it if it doesn't work for your users. But I wouldn't go crazy and just create every letter and every pro possible case because you can't. You just can't map it out unless you have database and, you know, HTML type of prototype where you can connect server side technologies and just drag massive amount of location details and then match it to them. But we don't have that luxury. So let's just create it for one letter. And that's gonna be, let's say, letter A. So I'm just gonna go ahead. So we can say on text change, show and hide, let's say, and we can just turn it off for now. As you can see, nothing is selected in this case, but we forgot to add, let's say, where our autocomplete suggestions would appear. And that's most likely just under this panel, like so. Let me just give it a little bit of facelift. Now for auto suggestions, you would maybe want to limit how many things you display. You, you don't have to, but I may be gonna just add maybe a couple, let's say. And I'm just gonna give it names for those bad boys. So maybe V1, plus plus. And then lastly, I'm just gonna make it a dynamic panel like so. And maybe call it suggestions. Cool. And now we just need to go back into our statement on text change, select the widget, which is basically, let me find it, suggestions, and just show it. We can slide it down as well, so make it more interactive. Half a second is excessive, maybe 400 ms is enough. So now every, every time we're gonna type, it should just slide down. Um, I didn't hide it, of course. Don't forget to hide it. So if you go to style and set it to hidden and let's preview again. 
So now if I start typing, boom, the suggestions appear. And if I type more, they just become the same. So what we can do next is actually set something up, something along the lines, let's say, on text change, um, enable case, so we can add some conditional logic to it. So case one, let's say would be if text on widget, this meaning our input fields equals text, something, something, then add that suggestion. So let's see what we can do with it. So let's say equals, we could do also one off, we can also do the variable, let's say one off, and I'm gonna go, let's say a, a capital, something like a s, let's say because ASDF, yada, yada, yada might be one of them, or let's say ASDF. So if it's too quick, you know, just be creative. So let's say if I say if this is a, we are going to show that panel here. If I would start with B, nothing happens. If I start with a boom, we already have predictions. So you would then go crazy and create a couple of different options. And then values, you can either hard code it or you can update depending on what's your letter. I'm not going to hard code it. I'm not going to just say Alberta here and then create another state to the dynamic panel and maybe make a switch. You can go ahead and do so if you think it's the way to go. I'm going to do it a bit more dynamically. So I'm going to show this, but I also going to insert an action and I'm going to set text and I'm going to set text to both v1 and so forth set text and then i'm going to say alberta set text again this is really random value so i'm gonna just think right now like alamo or something along those lines and maybe set text lastly something from a don't really know many locations from a so let's say alaska totally random. Let's just see how it works in real life. So I will tap A and boom, I have three selections which I can select. And now let's say we can do the same just to show exactly what I mean. I can also copy the if statement, just switch it to if, toggle it to if, and instead of A, enter the options like B, the letters which are next to it just in case I mean it's one off so you can type as many as you wish and then in the value of the suggestions we're just gonna type let's say so like Birmingham let's say boom so we have three different names for let's say fictitious locations a real location doesn't really matter but as you can see I have two statements and now depending what I type, it's just gonna type all in. So A is gonna be that, B is gonna be that. And so you can go as crazy as you wish. There is just infinite amount of possibilities for you to make. And you know, you can define as many cases as you wish. You can also, let's say, make something like, if you click on, let's say, Brazil, that it would repopulate the search field and hide that. I'm gonna leave it up to you how to decide that, but it's quite easy. Just add on click event to the value, check that the value is that, and with, let's say a variable, and then just pass that variable value to the text field. It's easy as that. And if you like this video, leave a comment down below, give it a like, subscribe to this channel for more material, and as usual, I'll see you next time.